In this video, we're going to be covering the process of uh, creating our drawings for the Warren 512 Pier number 2 uh, example structure. Um, before we begin, though, I do want to make a comment that I have uh, made a couple adjustments to the model uh, since the last video. I did uh, create a second set of ties here. I noticed that the 5C2s were actually at 6 inches, followed by the 5C3s at 10 inches. Uh, so in order to do that, what I did is I isolated the guidelines for the reinforcement um, and the bars themselves using display set set, rotate to a top view, and then utilizing guidelines with trim multiple, or, uh, which will trim and extend lines and then using break element using the guideline that I place as the break point I was able to chop the lines into multiple pieces and then create two separate sets with different spacings uh, associated then after that I mirrored them to the opposite side to have the same uh, layout there before we get into positioning I did want to cover a couple of other changes that I've made specifically to the cap here uh, based off of some testing that I've done. Now it, it seems that we're running into a little bit of trouble being able to obtain the user mark that is applied to lap reinforcement. I, I have a problem, or I have a feeling the, uh, the program is having a little bit of trouble differentiating between which bar you're attempting to get that user mark from inside of a 2D detail. So what I've done to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and double click on this reinforcement in order to open it up, uh, is I've removed the lap options for uh, our bottom reinforcement. And I've actually come back and modified the quantity of bottom bars uh, or bottom slots available to seven. That way it'll match the top reinforcement layers better. Now the reason I did this was that it allows for me to better align my stirrups from the top bar to the bottom bar. There was uh, potentially some issues that you could get in, especially if you're using a, a wide range of bar sizes in that that stirrup wants to be right up against the bar and it could uh, apply some leaning. So I've uh, increased our bottom quantity to seven here for uh, reinforcement and for our longitudinal bars I've only placed them in four locations of those seven slots as you see here. Now you can also notice that I've broken my left and my right reinforcement up into two separate entries. For my left, I have a location of left selected, bar size 8. Left offset of negative 11 foot 9 and a half, which is just long enough to get it off of this face and allow for that user-defined left in condition to follow the bottom of the bean slope there with the 13.2 degree angle, 11 foot 8 and a half inch length. Now, uh, for my right offset, 21 foot 6 and a half, that's just long, it's the distance from this face to the end of the bar. So basically, this face to center of beam plus one half lap length. Uh, now, all of these values are just mirrored inside of the right entry, so our location would be right. Our left offset now is 21 foot 6 and a half, right offset negative 11 foot 9 and a half. No left end condition, our right end condition matching the... Uh, the same as the left with the 13.2, 11 foot 8 and a half, and we are good. Now, if I go over to my stirrups, you'll see it's the same thing here. I'm just wrapping them around the bars that are actually present. Even though there's uh, room for seven slots down here, I only have four of them there. I need to make sure that I'm choosing the right spaces there. So with that done, now I'm going to position my reinforcement. So let's go ahead and open up positioning. That'll obviously be the first thing that we'll need to do. I'm gonna click on the first icon just to reset the numbers to zero. The second one will open up the Bar Factory Settings dialog you see here. Click Browse and open up the Rebar Shapes ACI.RSF file. Hit Open. Check the box for Mark Straight and Mark Straight Vary. And then check the last box to accept those settings. Now, one more thing before I continue with this. Uh, Additionally, within these tie sets that I've created here along the uh, tapering edges of this cap, utilizing the irregular dispatch reinforcing and on the options tab, obviously these will be varied sets, but I've modified my bent vary code to have same mark. That way, by default, these bars will all be marked uh, the same mark as they are on the drawings here. You'll see 5C2 represents every bar of that set regardless of its length. So I just kind of maintain the same thing. It'll help us out whenever it comes time to assign our, uh, our user marks. 
So now that we're ready to begin positioning, I'm going to click the third icon here, and then I'm just going to click Choose All. It'll run through one, two, and then we should get our results of the reinforcement where we can see all of our bars in here. Um, we have one unmanaged shape here. I'm going to double click on that and look at it. No, it appears that this is our uh, radial tie on the end there. So I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments to this. Rename that last leg to a G just to match standard hook. And then I'm going to call this maybe like a radial tie one. Um, whenever I'm happy with it, I'm going to hit OK. And we are good. I'm going to accept it. Now everything has a shape and a bench uh, and a bar mark applied. Our 5C2s have been applied 5A10 and 5C3s will be 5A11. We can see that here now. Um, and when we're ready, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the check mark to accept. Now that we have all of our bars positioned, the next step that we're going to need to do is apply our manual bar marks. So let's go ahead and open up the manual marking utility. Now depending upon when you're watching this, you may notice some differences in appearance between my dialog and yours. Uh, for the purpose of this training, I will be using features that were made available in the first release, as well as every other release following that, for the utility. Basically, any of the icons you may see that you don't have on yours are just uh, added features that will be coming in a future release of either OpenBridge or ProStructures. So, to begin, let's go ahead and we could do this one section at a time, maybe the footing and then the column if we we're worried about getting confused, but uh, using the three toggles I have here uh, enabled, so we're going to make sure that you obviously have to uh, enable them one at a time. They disable each other if you uh, turn one off. So I'm going to enable all three, and now I'm going to do a drag selection to get all of the bars, and then I'm going to hit load. In future versions, if you have no selection present and you click the load, it will do a load all. So just to make things easier. Now, I'm going to rotate to a front view and with the highlight bar option activated, I can right click on an entry here and say locate rebar elements and model and it will identify where those bars are. So now that just helps me to identify, okay, I want to call those in this case 11A1. And then below them, those would be our 11A2s, followed by our 8B1s. Now we have a 6A2 and a 6A3 here. I believe those are going to be our face bars. 6A2 becomes 6A3, 6A4, and then 6A5. All right, so now that we have those entered, what we can do is go ahead and apply these marks. And with that done, uh, I'm going to turn off the maintain rebar label grouping. And I'm going to come down and with that label grouping off, it is now summarizing all of the 5A9. So if I turn it back on, uh, you may notice that my 5A9s are multiple entries here. It's because there's multiple sets and multiple stirrups. Uh, but they're all the same bar mark. So I'm going to go ahead and turn label grouping off because I want to use the same bar mark for this. Uh, and I'm going to just use 5C1. Next up are our 5C2s, which are all of the 5A10s. We can go ahead and double check that. Both sides, yep. Okay, so 5C2, 5C2, 5C2. And then 5C3s, obviously. Just entering these in, 5C3. And in the future release, there is an option if you select a multiple line uh, selection there. If you right click, you can say modify bar mark for selection and it'll apply whatever you input into all entries. So just for future reference there. Now we're at our 5A17 and 18. I'm going to go ahead and locate these. Those would be right and under our beam where our beams come across the cap there. So those are going to be, let's check here. Uh, 5N1 for our bars that are bent, 5N1, and then 5M1 for the straight bars. Alright, so now that we're finished with that cap, we're on down into the column area. 
uh, we have our 46 verticals there that are going to be 10d2, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Next up, we have our, looks like I accidentally applied some of the dowels to the column. No big deal. Let me say locate rebar. And if ever that happens, so in this case, you see that it is currently assigned to the column. What I can do here in a second is double click on the bars and choose a different uh, concrete element to assign it to in order to change that ownership so I'm not worried about it right now I'm just gonna go ahead and enter in here 10d1 and then our ties here are going to be these are our standard t2 ties so those are gonna be our 4e2s there 4e2 and then our radial ties 4e1 and for our footing now we have the rest of our dowels I'm gonna do 10d1 and then for our Top longitudinal bar, or no, bottom longitudinal, I'm sorry. We're going to do 8G2, 8G2, followed by 8G1, and then 5F2, 5F1. And with all of that defined, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply marks. And then what I can do is come out into the model and make a selection, let's say these top bars here. It's actually going to select all the beam, but you'll see there should be a little additional information present for each of these elements down at the bottom. You see 11A1. All right, and if you're ever concerned if it got applied properly, you could always just uh, clear the selection. And let's just get the cap in this case. Oh. Selected one of the ties of the column there, and it selected the entire column. There we go. And I'm going to load that reinforcement. So there we go. We have our 711A1s, 711A2s, and so on and so forth. All right. Now that that all looks set and good to go, we are ready to begin creating our drawings. Now that we have our user marks applied, uh, we are ready to begin creating our drawings. So I'm going to rotate to a top view. And I'm going to go to the Drawing Production tab and section callout, make sure we're on the full size filled. Uh, that's just going to ensure that any filled, any circles that we uh, place are going to be a filled circle, like for rebar uh, ends for longitudinal bars, or dot reinforcement, or circle bars. So I'm going to define the width of my section there and the depth, and I'm going to give it a name, and I can call this one elevation, let's say full. I do want to create the drawing model and I do want to create the sheet model because I don't have any yet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and adjust my scale here just to make it a little bit smaller on that sheet. Um, but you can set it to whatever you'd like and we can always modify it after the fact. Now uh, last thing I'm going to do is uncheck the option for open model. I do not want to open the model yet. I want to create another elevation for the, uh, the right half of the section that we're going to create or this elevation we're going to create. You see on the left half we have hardly any reinforcement shown and then on the right half uh, nearly every bar is resymbolized. So we're going to create that same presentation in our final result. And we're going to need two drawings to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and it will create those drawings for me in the background. And now I'm going to place a second section callout and utilize the same full length and depth of the, uh, the pier here. And I'm just going to call this one elevation partial. And I'm going to deselect the create sheet model, modify my scale here to be 3 eighths inch equals a foot. And uh, when I'm ready, I hit OK. Now with both of those created, I'm going to navigate to my full sheet here, or not the sheet actually, I'm going to navigate to the drawing model. So if I hover over the, uh, the annotation symbol here, I'll get a pop-up. And then in the combo box that appears in that pop-up, I'm going to select the, ele uh, the drawing model item, which is identified by that gray background icon there, and then click the folder icon to open that drawing up. You could have also navigated to it through the, uh, the views here or through your models dialog as well. Now that we're in this view, I'm going to turn off the levels of the 3D bars from the model. And uh, this full view is intended to be the left half 
of my drawing here. So uh, most of my reinforcement is going to be hidden, especially the column reinforcement, as well as a lot of the beam reinforcement too. So I'm going to go ahead and activate my quick edit hide bar and then click the edit selected bar icon on the end. And uh, we can also go to our level display while that's uh, running and in the level display for the active model, which is the drawing model, uh, we can see that the levels appear as appended versions of their 3D level. So we can use this to quickly turn off all of the column and dowel reinforcement visibility within this drawing really quick. Now I'm going to go in and start hiding the beam re or cap reinforcement that I don't want to see. So basically all of our stirrups and our face bars and our top bars as well as this first set because they'll be visible within the uh, the right side of this elevation. I am going to keep these middle ones visible uh, because they actually cross over that halfway point. So Now with that finished I'm going to activate my modify rebar tool and select the first set up here and I'm actually going to check the box for detail all bars. You'll notice that I selected this set by clicking on the delimiter that took me straight to the bar range display options for the set. And uh, I'm going to modify my delimiter to give a different presentation as this callout kind of does of pointing at the bars themselves. Uh, so once I have that set and I'm happy with the location I can offset it up and down however much I need. I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark. And for our second set I'm going to turn the detail all bars on and hide the, del the delimiters. All right, now that we have our presentation set up for this uh, middle set, I'm going to go back to our first one and uh, place a callout, the 5-in-1 callout you see here for that set. So I'm just going to select the bars themselves using the modify rebar. And let's see here, uh, user mark. Now in this case I don't want a line label because that's going to try to put it on the line. I actually want to use a uh, leader or an arrow. So I can choose to use a terminator or no terminator, it doesn't necessarily matter in this case, but I'm just going to come out here and click and then choose a point for um, it to go on and uh, let me modify my preset here just so that I get the user mark. And I'm going to adjust my position to adjacent, that's better, that looks pretty good. And if I want I could um, even pull down here you see it's just attaching to that leader and um, the lock to origin function what that is going to do is lock it to whatever bar is actually being identified right now so if I were to come back up to my uh, bar range display and with a typical internal bar delimiter if I turn detail all bars off you'll see that is the bar actually being shown so uh, just a heads up on that feature there. So I'm going to come back to my uh, label and do that there and maybe give it an arrow just to add a little bit of zazz to that and accept. And now we're ready for our beam reinforcement here. Now one note about the beam, it was noticed that uh, whenever you have a lapped set of reinforcement with user marks applied, the program is appearing to have a little bit of a trouble identifying which uh, element to get the user mark from. So I, I've actually added these to the beam as separate bars, uh, identical in all their dimensions, just one's a left bar, one's a right bar, uh, removing that logic of a lap so that I could place my call out there and continue on to my bottom bars. now. I could actually copy this callout now, so I'm going to use my quick edit tool and copy bar label. Click the edit selected bar icon, choose the bar label you want to copy, left click once to accept, and then choose the bars you want to copy it to. So obviously my top footing reinforcement and bottom footing uh, longitudinal reinforcement. Now I don't want to select my transverse bars because these callouts are intended for longitudinal or main bars. With those two uh, finished, I'm going to go ahead and just make little adjustments to them. Click and drag 
to relocate the callouts to a place that I want them to be at. Uh, at this point, now that I've copied the label, if I wanted to further adjust these callouts for whatever reason, I could use the Modify Rebar tool and just select that label and then relocate it to wherever I want. Um, go ahead and do that for both of these. A quick way to get all the styling uh, formatting defined and then copied over and then if you need to make further adjustments you can. Now I'm going to label my longitudinal bars here. So I'm going to go ahead and select them. On my longitudinal bar label we need to be using the 5C1 user mark. Basically just obtain our user mark there. No terminator as is the case here with these. Uh, we're just going to be doing the same thing pointing at the center of the bar with a line. Uh, position adjacent, yes, that's going to give us that text right next to the leader line there. And uh, for leaders, I'm going to specify that we want two. And with that set, I'm just going to click in between whichever two bars I want a leader to go to. And then left click once to place a vertex. And then at this point, I could pull in a direction and right click to place my call out, or I could continue placing any number of midpoints along this vertex. And you'll see as I uh, rotate around, there are orientations where the program will add a little bit of uh, additional formatting and presentation there. So if I were to pull and extend back this way, both of the lines would be angled the same direction. Whereas if I were to just right click now, it's going to drop it like that. Now with that set, I'm going to accept and then use my copy bar label again on the 5F1 there and select my bottom longitudinals, or transverse, I apologize. And after those have been copied, I'm going to select that call out and just move it up to, let's say, right there. That looks good. And now I am ready to move on. Let me double check. I could continue to add any number of uh, additional annotations. So let's say dimensions, if I wanted to dimension my clearance value. Um, I can go ahead and do that here. Now do note that uh, these clearance values may not be accurate. Uh, side clearance was not indicated on the drawing, so. I just went with two inches and so on and so forth. Now I shouldn't have placed these on this side as that side's not gonna show up. I'm actually gonna clip that off, but I can continue here. Let me actually fix this annotation to show the distance to first bar. And if I need to modify this, pull it over here. And let me shift it down maybe so I can get more information in there. Get my second one placed. And modify the location of that. Now I could have had this working at the time of placement. Uh, all I need to do is just within my dimension style, make sure my location is semi-auto. And then see, I can control that while placing it. If I right click, it automatically places it. So that's the, the whole semi part there. Uh, now from that point, I could continue on and actually you know, utilize the, uh, the full length of this detail And one more. And I'm actually going to come back and delete that first three inch one that I placed now since I have this chain created. So what I'm going to do is, like I said before, remove that so I can utilize this. I'm going to modify this. Actually drop the dimension. So I'm just going to our dimensions here. Just get rid of that one dimension and add in a manual three inches on the end so it doesn't offset like it was there. And that's better. Now I'll modify my six inch the outside. So 
we'll just replace the six inch as well. Let me make sure that it is, yep, six, okay. And the only reason I'm doing this is just because I didn't want it to do that stacking uh, appearance that we were seeing there a minute ago. So if you're fine with the stacking, then no worries. But I will be modifying this shift out there. Perfect. And I'm going to come back in and adjust this and say uh, top footing. I actually want it to go in at the front. And I'm going to paste it here too and then change this to bottom footing. And let me add another space in there. That looks better. And I'm just going to use modify again to shift these a little bit further out. Better. And I can even bring them down a hair if I want. So uh, let's bring these out just a hair. a little bit more room to work with our three inch here. And four inch clear on our top, so let's go ahead and identify that. Now it, you'll notice that it is four and a quarter. What it's doing is, uh, since we are resymbolizing the center line of the bars, I may want to come in and, or actually what I can do is go into my level display and turn on the rebar from the footing. And now I'm going to actually hover over and hold down my right mouse button and activate the 3D model. Select, so you might have to do a drag selection there your footing reinforcement. Hold down your right mouse button and then select PS Properties. This will open up the reinforcing dialog associated with these bars and all I'm going to do is switch my above the short way reinforcement. That way I get the same appearance in here too and then I'm going to accept and deactivate. Boom, everything updated. Perfect. And I'm ready to place my top clearance value. So I'm going to go ahead and activate my dimensioning tool again. And good to go. Modify the position of that so it looks a little bit better. And adjust it maybe a bit more so that it is in line with the bottom clearance we're showing there. There we go. And let me modify this. See about there. All right, now that we have all that set up, um, I can continue. So let's say we need to put a dimension here. Now your dimension style will control whether it's shown in inches or feet. So let me go ahead and check my units here, my alternate settings. Uh, let me make this. I'll just uncheck that for now. There we go. Or actually, I can make this one foot. go. That'll show us our three foot there. Uh, any other dimensioning, you get the idea. We can just continue on as much as needed. So with that done, now we're ready to go to our second elevation. In this elevation, uh, we're going to be recreating the right half of our elevation here on this drawing. So uh, in most cases, we're going to be displaying all of the bars and utilizing some other form of uh, maybe you know, adding our own notes just, just to get some of the added arrows in here. Uh, the text that we will be placing is going to be live text, so it will update uh, without hitch. So to begin, I guess let's just start down at the bottom and work our way up with our uh, footing here. So I'm going to move this down to the side and get my footing into view. Now, uh, our footing reinforcement uh, is likely going to be coming from our other drawing, so we don't have to worry about that right now. And uh, you'll notice that, yes, we do not show any delimiters for our footing bars, but uh, for other reasons, it may be important to keep them visible just for the time being, as they do kind of control the location and placement of any callouts that we place on them. So 
I'm going to open up my Modify Rebar tool and select the first outer set of dowels here. And really all I need is just to place a single call out. So once I get this one call out placed, then I'll be good to go. Now I'm going to turn off my lock to origin and I'm switching my label type to an arrow label with an, uh, or a line, yeah, arrow label with an arrow terminator position adjacent. Let's go ahead and modify that. I'm going to come out into the model and left click once and begin placing my call out. So uh, after the first arrow place, then I'm going to click once to place a midpoint and then right click to uh, drop my call out there. Now that I have that placed, I'm going to click on the Modify Bar Limits icon of the Bar Modification dialog. I can actually close out of the main bar label. And I'm going to turn on Detail All Bars. Now you'll notice whenever I turned that on, it shifted. So what I'm actually going to do is adjust the presentation that I have here so that I only am pointing to the bar that I want to point to. So. I'm going to make sure that I get this set up. Let's say typical bar, I can offset which bar is being shown, right? Just till I get exactly the bar that I'm wanting to display. That's actually what I want to display. And then I'm going to turn on the detail all bars. Then I can offset through and you see the same process there. Uh, whenever that's finished, I'm going to go ahead and hide that delimiter. And I'm going to accept. Now I can do the same thing with these uh, dowels over here. You'll see there's actually two sets of dowels there. We have the near face and the far face. So I can hide one of them if I'd like uh, and their delimiters so that uh, I'm only focusing on a single set. Now we also, it would, seems to be a single bar that maybe was shifted over for presentation purposes, uh, which is why it's showing up as a single there. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize these and hide the others as well as a single bar of unknown origin. Hide. Perfect. All right, so now we're just going to modify the center range. And all I'm going to do in this case is just detail all bars and hide the delimiters. Uh, reason being is that I am just going to utilize uh, the easiest way to place arrows is with a so I'm going to enable my place note tool, make sure that I'm using the proper dimension style and working unit font, font height there. Uh, text rotation doesn't really matter. I'm just going to put a space bar in there and make sure we start at the terminator. And let's say I'm going to give it one here. Now I'm actually going to change my text here so that it doesn't give me a background. And before I place, I'm going to use that as a point of reference. Now as I place this, I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and actually I can place multiple of these. So I'm going to lock, hold control down while I'm clicking and it starts up the placement of another. And then I can right click to stop and now I have my multiple arrows as you see there. Alright, so now that we have our dowels, uh, call out place for our dowels, I'm going to come back up and uh, let's say go ahead and knock out this dimension here. And now we're ready for our 4E1s or our ties. So I'm going to go ahead and activate my Modify Rebar tool and select my outermost set of ties. I, it looks like I clicked twice too fast. I'm going to go ahead and right click just to place that call out there. But what I need to do is modify my bar range display. So I'm going to detail all the bars and I'm going to shift that call out good and far outside. That's about good right there. close that, close my bar label, and then reopen it so it en enables the modified bar label tool. And I'm going to adjust this callout text to facilitate my needs here. So um, it's seeing that we have 25 for a 13, or if I were to select the user mark variant of that for E1. Uh, but what I want to actually create is this callout right here. Now, uh, the summarizing of the quantities uh, I'm going to kind of infer on my own. So what I'm going to type in here is the bar size. Sorry. Ties at the spacing value. And then for my lower line, I'm going to put 
two times, and then money sign GN. And then my money sign open bracket user mark dot mark. And I'm going to come back up to this first line and add some spaces in. So what I'm doing here is creating the centered appearance that we have back over here. And I could actually put my and sign in there. And I am all set up to manually locate the second callout. Now the whole key of this is that I do want these user marks to be defined as uh, macros so that they are dynamic and the quantities are dynamic. Uh, the only thing that I'm inferring is that two times right there, so keeping as, as little uh, static as possible. Now with that said, I'm going to hit the Save Modified bar, and I'm going to come and select uh, the second tie in, or a, the alternate tie type. So with this one, what I'm going to do is use a arrow label type with no terminator, position adjacent, don't want to lock it to the origin, and I am just going to formulate whatever I need to complete this sentence here. So I'm going to use the GN that's present there, and my, actually I'll use the user mark starter point, give myself a hyphen in between the two, and another two times. Now what I can do is click once. It looks like it's getting placed perfect. Now all I'm going to do is come back over to where this uh, text is, click once somewhere around it, and then move upwards and right click, right? Obviously it can't stay like this, but what I can do is come over here and check this box for hide, and you see that that leader line turns into a dotted line, so now I can accept it. And if I need to, let's say, shift this down, oh, maybe a little bit more up. There we go. And I can shift this one down to about right there. Make sure that they're lined up. Perfect. There we go. That's enough. Now I'm ready to add any additional uh, callouts that I need. Uh, additionally, I need to modify my range display here. Accept that and this one. Accept that. And finally, well, that should be good enough because we are going to be turning off the display of these bars uh, halfway through. So we will be applying a clip volume that prevents their uh, visibility. So I'm going to go ahead and detail all these and hide that delimiter. And actually, we can hide these bars in their entirety because they'll be coming from the alternate detail. We'll hide these as well. This is another way to hide. And uh, let me go ahead and quick edit to copy some bar labels. So I'm going to copy my 10D1 here. And I'm going to paste it, let's say, right here and here. And for our bottom, well, let me shift these up real quick. I'm going to move that there. I will be relocating these to this location, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So modify rebar, our 11A2s, accept, and 11A1s, same thing, accept. And now for my 8B1s. Perfect. I'm going to accept that and with these now, detail all, hide delimiters, 
except, and the reason you're still seeing one there is that the other face of uh, reinforcement is visible. So I'm gonna now do the same thing for my top here, detail all, hide delimiter, accept, and then hide the other face. I'm not gonna worry at this point in time about anything that is on the left side of this detail as it will be uh, presented using the, uh, the first elevation we created. Now the only thing remaining is our verticals, so I'm gonna go ahead and modify rebar on them. And before I do that, I'm actually gonna utilize my copy bar label. Get that 10D1 copied up to our verticals. D2, perfect. Now I am gonna shift this up just a little bit because I'm probably gonna clip out the middle of this detail. So let me go ahead and do that now. Perfect. And if I need any additional lines, I can use the, uh, the note tool. I will need to do the same thing. I want to modify my rebar and display all of my verticals. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And arrange display detail all high delimiters. Accept. And we can continue. So now for our stirrups. Modify rebar, detail all. I'm going to be doing the internal as I want to point to them there. And uh, go ahead and label main with our user mark on an arrow adjacent. Lock to origin turned off. Click. And 5C3, perfect. And I'm going to accept that actually going to modify these next and hide that delimiter detail all except now for my 5c2s I could call them out like this but I'm actually going to switch it up a little bit and I am going to flip this to the other side and then just use my label line label call out to place 5c2 right there and lastly detail all I'm actually going to keep that delimiter there except and for the other set, I'm going to detail all and hide delimiters and not bother with labeling them as they're called out right here. All right, after review, uh, I noticed that we might run into some issues having this, these face bars be part of a single set. What I'm going to do is actually go back to my 3D model real quick and just correct them. So instead of having my... Uh, full length and part of an irregular dispatch set. What I'm going to do is turn my levels for my uh, GR bar beam, because that's what I used for my face bars, and grab both of these. And display set set. Now I'm going to rotate to a front view. Go ahead and select that right there. And now I'm going to place a line. I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard and left click on this string. Now unless you've changed your default button assignments, this should change you to the level and uh, symbology of the item that you click on whenever you do that. I'm just going to place a guideline that is going to be used for this 6A4 bar and a guideline that I'll use for the 6A5 bar here. Now with those two placed, and this guideline here, I'm going to activate trim multiple, select my guideline that I placed, and trim, 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 trim. An easier way to do that would have been to click and drag after selecting. If I would have clicked and drag, it would have automatically trimmed everything that I crossed over there. So with those taken care of, now I'm going to turn, I'm going to select display set clear and turn everything back on and open up my single rebar modeling tool. Choose bar size 6. Doesn't need to be a stirrup. And then finally, uh, for my in conditions, I don't want any assignment on the description of rebar cap. Select my concrete. And then I'm going to highlight all four of those guidelines. Make sure 
I have four, you'll notice I only have two because I need to copy them first. So let me go ahead and copy them to the other side. So we're going to go from, make sure they're in the right plane first. Yep, they appear to be. So I'm going to copy them from this line to that line. Rotate to a front view. Now do a drag selection. Should have four. And go ahead and select. All right, that should get them all in there. Now I'm going to select those sets and do positioning just to be safe. I'm not sure if anything could have been adjusted. Nothing should have been adjusted. They should have similar marks. And with that done, I am going to apply my manual marking. So these will be 6A. Yes. Go ahead and locate those. Those will actually be our 6A3s, not 6A5s. 6A3, try again, 6A, 6A4, and 6A5. Now apply marks, come out and look at my little properties, make sure that they have the proper marks on them. Let me select something in here. There we go, 6A4, go. All right, now we can close out of this and navigate back to our drawing. Should change things up a little bit. You'll notice that our callout that we placed on the end here is gone, but it's going to make it a lot easier to detail these bars out. So, all right, so I'm going to just edit my new face bars here. Go ahead and select them. I want to modify my bar limit, detail all the bars. And typical bar delimiter, go ahead and offset this. Let's see where we are at. One more click. And the whole purpose of this is just so that whenever I come in and try to place a call out, I want that uh, arrow to be placed close to where that's gonna be. So. Let me actually come back over here. I clicked a bit far off of where it actually needed to be at. There we go. And now whenever I hide my delimiter, uh, it's not going to affect it. So adjacent, come back, turn my delimiters off, and accept. And if I need to uh, make any further adjustment or maybe add some additional notes in here, I'm more than welcome to do that. So uh, one more arrow. Let's just for safe measure there. And maybe I can shift this out. Fix up my arrows here a little bit. Good enough. And now my remaining two will be super simple. I'm actually going to use Quick Edit, Copy Bar Label, Select the Bar Label, Select my Bars, View, and Go. Now I'll use Modify Rebar and get this shifted back over here. Accept, modify this one, there, accept. And we are ready to continue. So now with all of that set, I'm going to go to my sheet and we're going to arrange these to create our, our detail. Now that we've placed all the annotations that we need to place, we're ready to begin modifying our uh, sheet here and uh, adjusting the presentation so that we can get this appearance here. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is actually navigate to our sheet model and uh, you will you should see the partial or the full rather but the only partially uh, detailed uh, view already. What we're going to do is turn off the levels that we turned off in our drawing model so that we uh, are hiding the same elements. So let's turn off all those column and dowels. There we go. That looks better. And now I'm just going to move this. Let's say move reference and I'm going to pick, let's say, an area over here. Now, with that set, I'm going to move the drawing title down a hair. And I am actually going to copy this reference right on top of itself. So, copy. And I could do it off to the side or on top of itself. It doesn't really matter. But uh, basically, all I'm doing is just setting myself up for the top 
and bottom uh, clip boundaries. So uh, let me just go ahead and put it over the top of itself for now and I'm going to place a brake line. So there's many ways to place a brake line. You can obviously just come through and create your own brake line, but uh, I've actually written a little add-in that creates a pretty simple brake line really quick and easy. And it uses your active level, so let me go ahead and set this to make it look better. And I'm just going to pick a location for this brake line. Now I am going to turn those uh, 3D, not 3D, but the resymbolized dowels back on just so I know where to place the end of this brake line at. About there. And I'm going to copy this brake line up to right about, let's say, there. So this internal area will be the part that I cut out. Now with those two placed, I'm going to switch to a construction level, a construction element level. Uh, quickest and easiest one is just PS construction, or PS const and switch my weight back down to zero and what I'm going to do here is just place some shapes so I'm going to activate my place block tool and come over here to where I place my brake line and I could either set my origin and pull across or you could use that as your snap point and come up and over that way and then just modify your shape back in the opposite direction let's say to right about there and really I'm just going to copy this straight down to the bottom one. Obviously these shapes are a bit bigger than the clip volume that I'll need. So I can shorten them down if needed. But the whole purpose of these is just to give me the basis for my uh, clip volume. So I'm going to shift this over here. And now I'm going to use my modify uh, dialog with the insert vertex. And I'm going to add in this break right here go and same thing here perfect so I have those two set up now I'm going to create a copy of these and let me put them off to the side just for the time being and what I'm going to do here is divide them in half right so I'm going to come up and put it right there and copy this straight down here they don't need to start, they just need to make sure that we clip it completely off because what I can use is uh, the create region under the drop element group here on the uh, common tools. So let me expand that and then create region. And what I'm going to do is flood area, no fill. And I don't want to keep the originals, that doesn't necessarily matter. And then I'm just going to click, 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 click. Let me check these real quick, make sure I completely go across that and completely go across this. Looks like it might have gotten a little off there and repeat the process. More time here. Maximum gap, let me turn that down to zero. That's what's happening. There we go, perfect and perfect. So now I have uh, the two the volumes I need for these sides. But before I continue, I'm going to go ahead and modify the clip of these. So I'm going to right click the first one and in my uh, references dialog, I apologize, and then go to clip boundary. Doesn't matter which one we select since they're in the exact same plane. So I'm just going to pick the bottom one first. And now I'm going to repeat for the top one. So clip boundary, top. Perfect. And now I'm going to bring in my second reference. So let me go ahead and go to my models dialog and drag my partial in. With the, hit OK whenever you get the attachment method. If we need to modify any display in this, it, I don't think we do. Everything looks pretty good from here. So I'm going to just uh, shift it over, hold down your right mouse button while hovering over the reference. And then the uh, pop-up window that appears, go to move reference and select and then we're just going to move it so that we can snap to that corner there perfect looks like we might have a scale issue a difference in scale so i'm going to highlight the drawing title for this one and make sure we're at three eighths nope we're not so let me go ahead and change that to three eighths and move the reference back up to
to here. Perfect. And I'm actually going to turn the concrete off from that partial. Uh, reason being is that the concrete is getting in the way of other elements in the full view. So turn those three off and now everything breaks through. We're showing the concrete in the other view so we don't need to show it here. Now with that in place I'm going to copy this reference. So let's go down to my uh, partial and copy. I'm going to use the exact same process as before, copying it right on top of itself. And now we're going to go to our references dialog, right click the first one and click boundary, choose our lower right hand shape. And now for the second one, click boundary, choose our upper right hand shape. And now we have exactly what we're looking for. So with that being said, I'm going to go back to my references dialog, highlight all four of them at once using shift, or you can click and drag. And then I'm going to check this box over to the far right uh, for treat element or treat attachment as element for manipulation. So what that'll allow me to do, if I turn off my level for PS construction, I can highlight all elements and all parts of that drawing, and the boundary is actually now associated to the drawing. Uh, anytime you move a reference using this, though, make sure that you do not select the drawing title as the drawing title naturally moves, moves with a reference. So now I'm just going to shift this down to right about here. And I'm going to select all of them at once and shift them up. Let's say right about here. Now I only need to show one of these uh, drawing titles. I don't need to show them both. So at any point in time, I can delete one of these. Just make sure that whenever you delete, uh, you do not delete the reference associated with the boundary. So no. Right. Now, I can also see that uh, my callout here is partially cut off. And uh, maybe I need to make some adjustments. Something happened in there. So what I'm going to do, and all I need to do really, is adjust my clip boundary. So I'm going to check my level display and turn my PS construction back on. And it's this shape that I'm going to need to modify. So I'm going to go ahead and just come in and use insert vertex and place a vertex at the end of this break line here and then come up. So all I need it to do is just break there. Perfect. Now I can actually hold down my rat mouse button and activate that detail. I don't even have to switch from this drawing and shift that up just so that it looks bit better there. Go ahead and deactivate. And if I need to do any uh, annotations over here, let's say for our overall heights and whatnot, I'm more than welcome to do that too. So what I can do for that is I'm actually going to navigate back to my, uh, my full here and get my annotations or my dimensions placed there. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to place from here to here. And we will do from here to here. And any other, actually this one looks like a running annotation. So uh, what we'll do instead is one of these. Bring that out to about here, take that one to there, and get rid of our background one there. And now I'm just going to modify these. Actually, I can come in with a second one if I'd like, and we will do back to back, standard, from here to here, to here, and finally, we're two foot nine. Any adjustment that needs to be made to these, I can just use my modify element, shift them out a little bit, make this one match. There we go. Now I am going to modify this text. And this text. And what I could actually do uh, is open up a second view here. 
and navigate back to the sheet in that view. So I could be seeing all of the changes that I'm making in their effects instantaneously, basically. Right? So, looks like I might need to shift my detail over in the drawing or in the sheet model here. But as far as that 24 foot is concerned, you know, it could shift up a little bit more. The 33 foot 9 is going to be fine for where it's at. Uh, but I can continue on to my sheet, back over to my sheet rather, grab all this, deselect the drawing title so that it doesn't move twice as much, and shift it over, let's say right about there. And now it's just a process of modify. Bring this one out there, and same thing here, and insert some vertices. One at the end of the break line, and then up. And now, with all of that completed, all I need to do is just turn off my PS construction. Obviously, it wouldn't plot, but now we're we're all set. All right, and then maybe I add uh, an additional, uh, maybe some arrows over here once I get my uh, match line in here. So let me go ahead and do that now. I'll go to GNO Sim, use this one, and wait two, and then just locate the center. Come straight down. We'll go to there, and then from here all the way to the bottom. And now all that remains to be done is toggling off the 3D rebar levels within each of our views here so that they don't show up uh, whenever we plot this. Now that we have our elevation detail uh, created and if we're happy with it, uh, of course we could come in and continue to place any dimensions obviously using the uh, the reference that is displayed in its full entirety to accomplish those, uh, let's say, lap dimensions and uh, so on and so forth, embedment links and whatnot. But uh, with what we have completed so far, uh, we can continue on and uh, now let's, let's create the column section here. So uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, the first thing I'm going to do before I get any further actually, is change the name of this sheet model. So I'm going to go to my models dialog. Uh, up on your ribbon, you can go and locate this icon here, click on it, it'll open your, up your models dialog, and I'm just going to right click on the sheet and say rename. And now I'm going to give it a name that's a little bit more synonymous with an actual sheet. Let's say S1 in this case, you can choose whatever you'd like. Um, but the whole purpose behind that being it will update all of our drawing details <clears throat> as well as uh, enable you to. Uh, place those annotation symbols whenever we place a call out or a uh, section cut in here, uh, identifying the correct drawing number and sheet uh, to find it on. So uh, now with that completed, I'm going to go back to the elevation full drawing model. And with our settings we have defined currently, as in no rebar being displayed and only the, the selected uh, resymbolized elements showing up, I'm going to activate the section call out tool and choose my drawing seed of section full size filled and height from model create drawing now the only thing that i need to be concerned with is that where i place this is below that uh, reference boundary so in the i can go ahead and stop what i'm doing here real quick and in the second view that i have open if i click the view attributes and if you don't have a second view open you can open up a second view down here on the view toggle I'm expanding this view attributes and then right here in the view setup I'm going to switch my model to the sheet. Now it'll keep the drawing model as my view one model but then I can see the sheet over here so I can identify kind of how far up I need to go and make sure that I'm not you know going beyond that and I can always adjust it after the fact if need be. So I'm going to go back to my section callout tool using drawing seed section full size filled height from model and I'm just going to come over to the left side of my column here, or the right side, doesn't really matter. I'm going to hit O on my keyboard to set my origin. This just helps me to make sure that I'm off to the side a little bit. It's a bit of a habit, habitual thing, but it doesn't hurt. So I'm going to click once to begin placing my section here. And I'm going to pull all the way across and then click again. And then it doesn't matter really which direction I go in, I just need to look in a direction there and click. 
Then I'll get the create drawing dialog. We'll just call this uh, column section. I do want to create the drawing model. I do not want to create a sheet model, but I do want it to go on the sheet model. And if you look at the sheet model, that section cut's already showing up. So I'm going to keep the create sheet model option checked here. And in the sheets drop down or combo box here, I'm going to select S1. And then let's say I want uh, half inch equals a foot. I can do one inch equals a foot. Make sure I put it on there at one inch equals a foot as well. And hit OK. And it's should take me directly to the sheet model this time. Uh, one inch equals a foot. Maybe that was a bit tall, maybe not. Uh, let's just keep it at there. So I'm hovering my right mouse button over this section and I get the uh, pop-up window here. I'm going to say move reference. Make sure I don't uh, use the reference dialog list this time. I'm just going to click and drag. Now in future releases you will be able to uh, what is called fudge reinforcement uh, and in other terms uh, be able to adjust one leg up one leg down to be able to uh, properly identify uh, the bar that you are showing and in this case we have 90 degree ties on top of each other so uh, it's impossible to see where where the leg begins and ends at but uh, the key being here we can place a bending schedule with all of our bending diagrams that uh, a placer could use to reference and identify what exactly is being called out and uh, we have a few other options available to us that we could use if necessary to uh, further modify the appearance here but I'm just gonna adjust my drawing title here in that direction pull it all the way across and then I'm gonna navigate to the actual drawing model so I'm just hovering over an element in the reference, holding down my right mouse button, and then going to, if you don't see it, just try again, exchange, and then we want to go to the column section, not to the 3D model. So go to column section. All right, now as soon as we get into this, uh, we can look and see, and maybe we want to uh, go to the drawing here, and maybe we want to provide the same sort of, you know, alternate appearance for our dowels as opposed to our column reinforcement. Uh, we can definitely turn off that filled option for those bars. To make things easier on myself, I'm going to go over to my level display here and I'm going to turn off all of the rebar column uh, elements. And now you see all I have left are my dowels. And it looks like some of them um, might already have gotten that. I'm just going to come in and do my modify rebar and repeat the process on all these as well. <clears throat> so modify rebar, select the, the bar set and then in the first uh, field of the bar modification toolbar here, I'm going to hold down and go to longitudinal bar attributes, turn field circles off, except I can also uh, do this by going to the main bar text and you'll see there is a, actually because they're not longitudinal bars, I can't use main bar text. I need to make sure that I'm using anytime I want to place a call out for these, I need to be using the longitudinal uh, bar label dialog, but I'm going to go ahead and Go to the longitudinal bar attributes, turn those filled circles off, except, and then for the final set here, same thing, longitudinal bar attributes, and no filled circles, except. Now, with that done, I'm going to turn my column reinforcement back on. Column bar. And you'll, you may notice that uh, some of my elements appear to be running into others, right? Like... Uh, Maybe they need a little bit of adjustment in the model to get them exactly where they need. I Obviously, I just put the, the dowels immediately to the right of each vertical. And occasionally, that didn't work. You know, this dowel is going to need to be in a different location. And um, typically, they're not going to want that column vertical outside of the corner of that, uh, that tie there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over to my level display here. And I'm going to turn the uh, the rebar elements in the model. So I'm going to select the, the model entry in our level display, and I'm going to turn those rebar dowels on. Now, in order to make changes to those, so the, the first thing I need to do is go into my, uh, my references here and look at my presentation settings. And I'm going to adjust these just for a moment. I'm going to turn that clip volume off. Now, you have to be careful because this will enable everything from the model. And uh, I will need to uh, further adjust this, so I'm going to change this to wireframe view for the time being as well. And there we go. Now we can see everything from the model. And we can make adjustments 
on it if necessary. So uh, with that done, now I'm going to activate the model. So I'm going to hold down a right mouse button on top of any element from the model. And I'm going to activate. That will activate our 3D model. I'm going to go to my rebar modification tab and use the move rebar tool. And now anywhere that I might want to maybe adjust the presentation or display of uh, any of these bars, I can select the bar, pick the point I want to move it from, and then the point I want to move it to. So I'm just shifting these over to make them look a little bit better, uh, make the presentation a little bit clearer here. And there, and I'm just using that, uh, that snap point on the outside edge of this bar. Sometimes it might be difficult to snap to that one key point there if you can't just snap to any outside edge. So I'm going to go from there and then to the inside. And maybe a few more. And again, this isn't absolutely necessary. Uh, obviously, the bars, there's nothing, no geometry changing about them, just their presentation. So uh, totally up to you whether you want to uh, go through this process or not. But in the case you do, this is how you would go about it. All right, now that I have everything adjusted and looking just right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, deactivate my model. So hold down right mouse button, deactivate model. Everything should update now. You'll see now there's little purple circles on top of those dowels that we adjusted. I'm going to go to my references, click on that presentation field, and then change, turn that clip volume back on. And I can say from parent for my display style, I'm going to hit OK. And we're back to where we were before. Now, um, maybe I need to adjust that column. I'm not sure. Oh, those were my added ties here. Maybe I need to go out and pull that out just a hair to get it around that last tie. Uh, but with what I've got so far, I'm going to go ahead and start placing some callouts here. So uh, we see we have our dowels being called out as 10D ones. I can do that. So I'm going to go to drawing production, uh, modify rebar, choose one of my dowels here. And uh, let's say specify the number of liters. We're going to use two. And I'm going to say user mark. Just going to click anywhere out here. It's going to grab the nearest two. And there we go. All right, moving on, we've got uh, four E1s on the end. That's easy. So I'm going to go over here to those. Four E1. And we're going to use the main bar callout, not the longitudinal bar callout, with a user mark. And we go. You can place it inside or outside. Let me adjust that. That's better. Now with those two callouts placed, I'm going to use the quick bar edit tool or quick edit to copy the bar label from this 4E1 to the numerous 4E2s that are present. And I'll just adjust. I want to make sure that I place it once for each, or as you do here, you maybe you could place one um, and then you know just add additional labels for the others. But I'm just going to go through here, make sure I get the first one is placed, the second one is placed, the third one there, and the fourth one is here. Now I'm just going to come back through using the modify rebar tool here to uh, select that callout and reposition it directly above the tie in plain sight there, and then basically repeat this for the remainder of them as well. If I want to make sure that they're at the same height, I can smart lock here and come across and make sure I can do that. Or after I get one of these placed, since they are an exact duplicate of the other, uh, I can just copy bar label on these and paste them on these, which is a little bit easier, right? And then I can just come back through. It did get rid of my other ones that I had placed. And uh, finally, I guess I could uh, do the same thing for my last radial tie if, if necessary. So I'm just going to paste that there and then shift it over here. All right. 
Now for our longitudinal, or vertical rather, reinforcement. I'm going to do a modify rebar on our verticals, the filled circles. Except I want to place a leader or a uh, dimension line style callout, typical of what you have here. Now uh, the macro for spacing, or number of spaces rather, uh, is currently for whatever reason not pulling the correct dimension or the correct value rather. So uh, for this point, in, or at this point in time, I'm just going to use the quantity at spacing. Um, now, in the case that the spacing value you're provided with is not uh, sufficient, so like for our column verticals, we don't define the spacing value for verticals, we only define the quantity of verticals. So in that case, maybe it would be more beneficial for us to utilize the dowels as the point of reference for our uh, our callout. So I'm going to select them instead, and you'll see the difference here. Whenever I come in and choose my quantity at spacing, my spacing is going to remain at that 10 inch definition, which is set because uh, I modeled these with the irregular dispatch tool. I'm going to offset this down just to give me a little bit more room, um, and or maybe not that much. And additionally, it looks like my scale might be a little bit off from what's used on this drawing here. I've got a lot of white space to work with here. So uh, if necessary, you can always come and take this down to 3 quarters of an inch equals a foot, and the changes should be automatic on what you see as far as the result goes. So with that set there, um, let me go ahead and check mark that. And now I just want to place some text for my verticals. Now, I could say, you know, uh, each face here if I wanted to. Or long faces if necessary, you know. Um, I can put stuff there. At this point in time, I could just come in and, you know, manually enter in here if I knew that my verticals were always going to be 10D2 regardless of any revisions that come through or whatever. I know that the bars and any information I place about them in regards to bending dimensions, lengths, material takeoff quantities, what's and whatnot, uh, is going to be utilizing the information from the model. So if I can be certain that 10D2 will be used regardless of if this pier gets taller or shorter, in this detail, it makes things a little bit easier because I can just come in and say, uh, put an ampersand there and just manually type 10D2. Now, all of my spacing and quantity is going to be live updated from the model, but at least now, it uh, looks like I need to add another space right there. Anytime you have the item type in there, I believe it, it's ignoring that space immediately after the item type, so I have to add a double space there. But um, now that I have that set, I have my 10D and my quantity and spacing on each face there. Now I need to detail my bars around these outside edges. I'm just going to place kind of an ambiguous, or not ambiguous really, but uh, I'm going to use a radial dimension myself. Now in future releases, you will be able to uh, utilize, the program will be able to utilize any radial path defined to create our delimiters as needed. But uh, for the time being, we're just going to use our radio line here. That looks good. Maybe it's a little lopsided in nature. There we go. And and really what's happening there is that since I'm going from that first to last, these, these vertical bars are the ones that are actually lined up since they came from the column. So with that set, maybe there's a little overlap there. Uh, I feel like Blazers could probably figure it out. But I'm going to modify my text here. If I come in and I say uh, 6 spaces, um, 5, 10, D1, and 10, D2. See, it kind of adjusts. Now, in a scenario like this, maybe it'll be better if I just copy that and leave it with a space bar and place a note using um, maybe a, a different type of end so that I can get that uh, connection there. So let me go ahead and say, uh, just going to adjust my terminator here for a moment and make it nothing. And then I'm going to control V paste in there and let's move this down. I want to start at terminator from there. And last thing to do is just make sure that my text style is actually proper. So in this I need dot 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 one two five and that's text height. 
That's better. Paste that there. And we're good to go. Now I might need to adjust this in. Let's go inside here a bit more and it'll flip sides. As soon as it runs over that text is when it will switch to the other side there. And uh, I can continue this as much as I need. So let's say I need uh, my dimension lines. So width of column, length of column, straight edge. Well, let's go from the outside edge. So we'll go from here to, there we go. So from there to there to obviously right. We have 14, 2. I can also snap to the center. That's about right, and then it should be another. And we can adjust these lines after the fact if we had any kind of difficulty. I'm not sure why it's giving me trouble there. Now that we have all of our callouts that we need here, uh, if we needed to add any other guidelines, annotations, um, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, just to give you a quick walkthrough here, I'm going to use the GNOSIM level. I like to use the same level for all of these annotation elements as it helps kind of keep things in order. I know which levels are going to pertain to what elements and stuff like that. So let me go ahead and make that a little bit longer. I'm going to use the properties dialog to do that since I don't want the center of it to move. I'm going to make it just, let's say, what four foot looks like. That's pretty good. And the same thing for the long direction. So uh, this one's going to just end right at the column. I'm going to go straight across here. So from there to there. Now that we have placed that dimension, uh, the only things that may remain to be uh, annotated here are our center line of peers. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the place note tool. And using the uh, Iowa DOT dimension style, I'm going to return my terminator back to what it was originally, and I do want my horizontal text rotation, that's fine. So uh, with the current settings defined, I'm going to check my text style here, make sure it's at 1 8 that's good. And then I'm just going to put, um, I can either type in CL peer or I can come in with a just a C space peer. And I would probably put two spaces in there. And what I'm doing here is just basically formulating a, uh, uh, a text string that I could use to come back with a second piece of text and create the L to create the center line symbol. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and turn on my inline leader. I do want an inline leader. There we go. That's better. Place that there. And I can go ahead and use this one for now. I'm just going to format it so that it looks proper with my CL. And let's get our text rotation back to zero here. CL, that's good. And now I'm just going to copy this from there to, let's say, here. Maybe shift these up. There. And then, uh, let's see, last thing. I'm going to copy this bar label over to my 10D2. So I'm going to edit that one onto, say, these. Where did it place that? There it is. 10D2. If I don't like that placement, I can use the modify rebar and come and specify to preset a user mark and just pick a location that I want it to place at. That's better. And if I'm happy with that, I can hit the check mark. And let me go ahead and close out of my dimension style window here and navigate over to my sheet. And we can see the results. Now I do need to modify this scale so that it matches the scale that's in the drawing model. So I'm going to highlight the drawing title here and switch this down to, I believe we changed it to three quarters of an inch equals a foot. It's a little bit better. Shift this down. And uh, I'm just going to move my reference here. Go from there to there. And I do notice that my uh, my longitudinal bar callout seems to be not present at the moment. So I'm going to check my level display. And it might have been with the, um, the scale difference. But I'm going to go ahead and there it is right there, level 33. It was just off. So 
no big deal. Got those displaying up now. And uh, if I'm ready, I can create my top section. So I'm just going to create the top section. It's basically uh, the same process of detailing it as before. So I'm going to use the section full size filled again. Again, coming across the top, I just want to make sure that I'm above the cap, but I don't want to go all the way through. I just want to see those uh, the tie information there. So I'm only going to go so deep, and I can say uh, beam plan here maybe, and I'm going to put it on the same sheet as before. Let's say here sheet S1, and half inch equals a foot is fine. If you want to adjust it, feel free to. Click OK and it should take you to your sheet model where it's going to reference it on. And uh, at this time, if you need to decrease the scale of it whatever, uh, for whatever reason, you're more than welcome to. Just make sure you do the same thing within the drawing model. So uh, I'm going to move this over and let's see what scale looks better here. Maybe um, 3 eighths. That's a little bit better. And then I'm going to hover over any element in there, or I can go down to my view uh, combo box here and just go to my beam plan to navigate to that drawing model. And then here I also want to make this scale match so that I'm seeing the same thing in both places. 3 8 inch equals a foot. And then it's just the same process of hiding the bars that I don't want to show and then displaying the bars that I do want to show. And in this case, uh, the plan I'm referring to is the one at the top here, where basically all we're going to do is display our beam longitudinal bars and then maybe place some annotations for our key waves. Now, just as an example here, I would start with quick edit hide bar and anything that we don't want, let's say the quickest way to hide all of our column bars would be just to turn those uh, levels off. So there's our column reinforcement right there within our drawing model. Uh, but then for our actual beam cap, uh, you'll see we've got our first thing that's going to need to go are the added bars in under the, the beam seats. So let's locate where those are. That's them there. And then there's those there. And again, we're only doing this for two of the sets, so those and those. And then we'll just detail all of that last one showing, as shown here. And maybe we could do that within an alternate uh, section that we then use a clip boundary to create this half and half sort of appearance. But uh, with that completed, now you see that our delimiters are already kind of outside of the concrete here. And uh, really in this scenario, I would probably hide that second set of delimiters and just lump the one call out in with both. So what I'm talking about there is coming in with this and basically all we need are the bar mark. And I could put uh, double hoops on the end as you've said i mean uh, really nowhere in here you'll notice it does it say two hoops it's all the way down here that it identifies that double hoop so um, as far as the dynamic nature of it goes if if your ties are always going to be the same within a set so 2 5c1 2 5c2 and even if they change they'll remain geometrically similar to each other then really we could just use common text to identify that and then knock these out with, uh, let's say this here. So let's say at um, money sign NS. We do want the um, line label and I'm just going to come out here and click. And if I didn't want to provide the quantity there, I could just say that and actually let me adjust this so that it is my user mark. There we go, 5C1 at one foot. And if I wanted to provide the quantity, there's nothing wrong with that. So I could say even uh, 2X, money sign GN. Maybe put a hyphen in there just for safe measures, make things look a little bit more. Well distributed, accept that. And now, copy bar label, from U to U. to you, and then finally, let's use that one there. Now I just need to modify my bars here to adjust my delimiters. There we go, and accept that. Come back over to this, and I can um, 
accept it, or I can continue to adjust the, uh, the location of this callout if I want. Let's say I wanted that one there, and so on and so forth. Uh, accept this and flip this one here. And actually what I want to do is not use that one there, but use this one here as it is the... Um, there we go. As it is the one on the uh, topmost side of this plan view. So using modify rebar, come in and go to my delimiter settings, flip. And I can make further adjustments to these if I need to, maybe shifting one up, one down uh, to get them outside of each other as is necessary. But accept that, come down to this one and hide it. Go to my call out settings and hide that. Uh, I don't want to hide the bar, I just want to hide the delimiter. There we go. And actually let me delete that call out, accept. Perfect. And again, let me just come in for appearance purposes here. I'm going to switch this over to a line callout, lock to the origin with a dot. And oops, that's not. There we go. Switch this to adjacent. Accept. And then finally, modify these here to just detail all high delimiters. And accept. And then basically anything else I can just hide. So uh, unless I want to call out that bar in this location, so 11A1s are really the only ones being called out here, um, I don't really need to concern myself with anything else. So let me just modify this delimiter to hide it. I can u actually use hide bar on the other longitudinals that are showing up. I'm assuming those are my 8B1s on the bottom there. Um, and really anything else. Uh, that is on the left side of my center line here, I can disregard since I will uh, use a clip boundary for this. So again, I would just, at this point here, what I could do is take this model, and I'm actually going to duplicate it. So go to my models, right-click on the, uh, the active plan, this beam plan, and I'm going to copy. And I'm just going to call this beam plan left. Uh, left beam plan. Okay. And in this one, all I want to do is just maybe annotate these here. So using my modify rebar or quick edit, I'm going to hide everything that I don't need, which is most of this. Again, some of the column stuff that we need to hide is going to be easier to do uh, just by turning the level off. So here's column right there. Already knocked all that out. Hide all these bars. Our stirrups. And basically anything that isn't uh, being removed here, you might notice this, it actually, during that copy, it created it as text. So I'm just going to do a select all and a delete. And you'll notice it won't delete elements that are actually live 3D, uh, you know, associated to 3D rebar elements. So going back to my quick edit, hide bar, I'm going to, actually what I'm going to do now is use my rebar attributes to update, to rebuild those that I might have deleted if you ever accidentally delete something that was live, just open up your rebar attributes, update, and it'll bring it back. Uh, and now, looks like I might have gotten a little click hacky, happy on my hide, so I'm going to show my hidden. And then unhide bars that I need, which is that one there. And turn that back off. Go back to hide bar, and let's hide the remainder of these ties that are unnecessary for us. Perfect. Next up, Modify rebar on each of these, and I'm going to use my delimiter settings to detail all bars. If I want to, I can hide the delimiters. It's not really necessary for me to display these delimiters. Now for our uh, 5M1s there, we might want to keep that delimiter uh, just because of its appearance, but that's these here. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that delimiter to the other side just to match what we've got here, and then let me 
close out of that and reopen my callout settings and really we just need the quantity at spacing so let's use our quantity at spacing I'm not sure if the text will fit oh yep sure it will perfect now with that done I'm gonna accept that come into my other bar modify rebar on these I want to detail all and hide those delimiters accept and then if I need to place any annotations dimensioning uh, the actual spacing here so let's say one foot and uh, the rounding there or what unit is being displayed is entirely based off of uh, the active dimension style so the reason it's showing 12 inches instead of one foot if you recall is that we modified our dimension settings within the units say if the distance is less than or equal to one foot just display it as subunit label so all right now we're ready to get this detail placed on our sheet back to our s1 sheet let me move this off to the side here and i'm going to move our first reference turn that reference dialog list move off i'm just going to set it uh let's say here for now um shift this over a bit and then hit my line place now i'm going to use my alt left click on this line over here to match my uh, symbology settings or my active level settings so that i can maintain the same appearance and i'm going to come in and place a line right at the center line of this pier so let's see right about that midpoint there it is right there go straight up and then I'll extend the length of it using my properties dialog so within my properties go down to geometry and let's say length we'll make this a little bit longer what does two inches look like yeah, let's go to three that's good shift that down a hair and now I'm going to use my actual construction level again so PS construction and then just create some shapes around here I can set this back to the original it really doesn't matter the level settings that I'm using for this element since uh, it won't even be visible so just make sure I get everything I need wrapped around here there and I'm gonna go ahead and mirror this right about center this is going to create a copy of it that I can use for the other uh, plan that I created so I'm going to go ahead and bring that plan in now so beam plan left drag and drop okay pick a spot for it and we're going to move it now move reference right on top of first perfect all right now it's just a process of hovering over the references dialog and applying our boundary so I'm going to click the first one click boundary use reference dialog list this time and choose our element there next up we need to clip this one so our left one the boundary and choose that and there we go now i'm going to get rid of one of these drawing titles just hit delete but whenever you get the prompt that follows uh choose no obviously go into our reference dialog here and turn these on to be treat as treat attachment as element for manipulation so that we can easily move these around so I move that one over here and then I'm going to grab all these and each time I'm making a drag selection I'll make sure that I grab everything um, that is associated to it for instance these break lines and stuff like that super important for me to copy with just so I don't want to leave them behind I could group them with the uh, the clip boundary element after placing that clip boundary and applying the clip boundary so that's always an option but let me just shift this down let's see how much closer you'll see there's those as I was stating before those break lines let me move them down to here and uh, as I was saying before if I wanted to make sure that they didn't move I can highlight both the uh, clip boundary element and that break line and control G to group them together so let me highlight that clip or that break line and this clip boundary 
holding control on my keyboard, hitting G, group. And now whenever I move this, the boundary will move with it, and coincidentally, the break line too. So that helps out a little bit. Now in this scenario, maybe I need to shift up my column a little bit, get it closer to the bottom of this beam, and then bring this drawing title up a hair. And then the same thing here, moving this up. That drawing title back down. And then finally, let me turn that section at the top here on. Now if I need to adjust the location of that section, you see it's kind of cutting through the top of the beam there. I can take this right here, pull it up however far I need to go. That's good. And whenever I'm finished making my adjustments here, I'm just going to come in and turn that PS construction level back off. I need to get off of that level first. Go in and turn off PS construction and make sure all my other levels are looking good here. So uh, let's see in my, my beam plan, I am going to need to turn off my column bars there. I also see some uh, levels here that are bars that need to be turned off. It looks like maybe some, oh, you know what that is? That's our delimiter for the uh, longitudinal reinforcement. Maybe one of them is still on. So I want to turn that off. To do that, I'm just going to hover over any element within that drawing model, hold down my right mouse button, and go to the exchange. Now, in my case, it displayed like that, but it could also display with a multiple selection here. If you have the multiple selection, just make sure that you uh, choose the option that matches the drawing model name. The other one will take you actually to the 3D model. So uh, we want to exchange to the drawing model, do a quick edit, and just utilize sidebar to add those bars. All right, and with that finished, uh, looks like we might need to hide this delimiter here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Not sure if maybe I missed it on the first go around, but now we should be good. Going to use the save, save settings. Anytime you make some level changes within a, uh, a sub model, it's always helpful to save the settings so that they are retained. And now we're looking good. So the only thing remaining uh, would be maybe my bending schedule for all the bending information. Uh, and, and I'll be providing a secondary video to uh, display the how-to on that, seeing as it will utilize the newer schedule generator tool that I've developed.